Hi there, I am Aaron and this this is the Call to Cinema. Today we've got a big video. We're doing our normal Thursday. I guess I should put the microphone close by. We're doing a normal Thursday video, but not so normal because we're going to be looking at some uh, some releases that were announced today. I have a, an unboxing to do, so that's always fun. I'm always excited to do, uh, to do an unboxing as well. I just finished uh, watching before I came on. Or actually, I just finished work. And in between, like my uh, my work break. Hey there, Todd. <clears throat> I watched uh, Brian's Sours just to this video, and I watched uh, Mastercast TV's video as well. So uh, I watched a couple videos just now. Hey there, Scott. Or hey there, Matt. <clears throat> Hope you're doing okay. So I'm gonna be talking about the indicator announcement. There's some stuff that came out with with Makeflix as well, and um, we're gonna be looking at a couple different things. I got my hey there, Griff. Hey, Sierra. Brought you something nice. I got something that I'm gonna box right in front of you guys. So this is my the stuff that I got from uh, from Mill Creek Entertainment. So these are coming out. I <coughs> uh, got you at the right time finally, and um, I think most of these come on February 16th. So uh, <coughs> I'm gonna be. <coughs> I opened it up, but I haven't looked inside yet. Hey there, Dustin. Welcome, man. So just so you know, oh, by the way, uh, news for my uh, for my Crimson Cult, for my Patreon subscribers, Vinegar Syndrome is doing a really big February sale. <clears throat> so the February titles are not the regular Vinegar Syndrome. Well, they are the regular Vinegar Syndrome titles, but they're of a certain type of title. So that's not something that I'm going to be talking about on my regular channel. <clears throat> However, for the first time ever, and we'll see how it goes... Um, and I'll let you guys let my patrons know ahead of time. I will be doing a live stream and a patron exclusive live stream about the Vinegar Syndrome February sale. Uh, so keep an eye out for that in the near future because that is something that is coming up. I'm very excited to do it. <clears throat> hey there, Brian. We just got Brian here who just I just said I just finished watching his video on the January unboxing for the Vinegar Syndrome titles, by the way, which you should check out along with just this podcast as well as the YouTube channel and Pure Cinema. So make sure you're checking that stuff out. So Brian has already gotten his. So I'm kind of interested in if Brian got the same ones that I got. And I'm never quite sure what I'm going to get. Because you uh, put in for certain titles. But you don't always get like the titles that you that you expect to get. And sometimes where I live in Canada, we, the, some of those titles don't reach over this side of the border. So you always put this here. And I, I like these. I like these things. I wear you know, fashion statement, whatever. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so um, we're going to go over the, looks like the Blu-rays are here and the DVDs are here. What do I do first? Okay, so everything on here is going to be, uh, hey there, Cinematic Collector. Hey there, Alan. <clears throat> hey. So there's going to be DVDs and Blu-rays in here. So first off is one that I'm kind of really interested in having the Blu-ray of because I did watch this. Because uh, I'm doing like a, a DVD unboxing. <clears throat> I did a DVD, uh, like a kind of, not review, but I, I've got one like filmed that I got for like a, a four pack. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, this was like one of them. And I did like this film. <clears throat> so this is Breach with uh, with uh, Chris Cooper, Ryan Philippe, and Laura Lenny. Yep, so this is actually a really fun film. I actually like this movie a lot. I, uh, I'm going to be reviewing this one. Gary called the... It, Fantastic Gary Cole's in this film, and I love Gary Cole and everything. Uh, so, uh, you know, of course, he's got to start in shows like Midnight Collar <clears throat> and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Hey there, Kubrick. So, got that one, and uh, excited to watch this one again on Blu ray. <clears throat> so, I am going to rewatch the Blu ray. Now, I don't think any of these here like have any features on them. If they do have features, I'll let you know. <clears throat> Next up is a two-pack. Now, the first one I'm very familiar with. The second one I know I saw back in the day, but I don't remember. Uh, I think it was a straight-to-video uh, to film. <clears throat> Heather William. Okay, by the way, is with Woody Harrelson. We'll get to that one, actually. And that is The Net with Sandra Bullock and The Net 2.0. So I don't remember The Net 2.0 at all. So I don't even remember the stars in this one. <clears throat> so we got Nikki Deloche. Uh, Keegan Connor, Tracy, Neil Hopkins, directed by Charles Winkler. So, 
and the original is directed by Erwin Winkler. Was that his brother, maybe? <clears throat> it's your birthday tomorrow. Well, happy early birthday, man. The Godzilla Criterion sets definitely. If you're a Godzilla fan, are you a Godzilla fan? Because you're a Godzilla fan, it's definitely worth it. There's Gamera sets too. So if you're a Gamera uh, fan, that one's really worth it. Uh, depending on like which which camp you're in. You're a Kaiju fan, obviously. You're asking me um, about that. I actually afterwards I can actually take my Godzilla set. I'll show you what it looks like. <clears throat> yeah, I love the '90s version of High Tech. It's always so fun and hilarious. All right, so I, the Kale by Wegg is apparently is getting a lot of love, and it's going to get some love here too. So we got Kiefer Sutherland and and uh, Woody Harrelson in the Kale by Wegg. I actually really like this movie. It's a fun little, you know, kind of like you know, adventure comedy type film, uh, an action film. Dylan McDermott, Ernie Hudson, great cast in this movie. Really excited to rewatch this one. Hey there, Vanessa. That I love movies that date like that. Because I love looking at films like on how they thought technology was when they were kind of like when the films were written, they were out of date. To be honest with you, uh, like that's like TV shows like VR Five and stuff like that. I've got the original Superfly, but I don't have the other one. <clears throat> so the other three are <clears throat> there's three, right? Yep. Yeah. Are some DVDs <clears throat> that they uh, put out that I really wanted, and I'm actually kind of. That's what you got, Breach, Breach, uh, Net. So, okay, so these are the ones that I got that you don't have. So I don't guess you go for the DVD ones. I had to go for some of the DVD stuff if it's a movie that I like. And I remember liking this film, so I'm I'm kind of interested to see if I'm still going to like it, how it's going to stand up uh, today, <clears throat> like Hackers, exactly. And it's a comedy called Baby Mama. I'm a huge fan of Tina Fey and Amy, and Amy Fuller. I've had a huge crush on Tina Fey for years, uh, so... Saw this one originally back in the day. Really liked it. Uh, hopefully, it's going to stand up. It's not that old, really. It's only like a few years old. How old is this? It doesn't seem that old. Like it's got Dax Shepard, Greg T Kinnear, uh, more attorney, Sigourney Weavers in this one. <clears throat> All right, so this, these next two are going to, for my 90s people here, these next two ones are going to bring back some feels for you, <clears throat> as my kids would say. And they won't say anymore because I just said it. <laughs> but these next two titles, these are multi, uh, multi-film multi titles, are going to bring back that kind of that kind of feeling for you. So first off is a Jim Carrey three-movie set. And it's got Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Ace Ventura, When Net Nature Calls. <clears throat> and my personal Jim Carrey favorite film of all time, aside from The Truman Show, which I think is one of the most brilliant films ever, is The Cable Guy. Hey there, Master, Master Chaos. Welcome, man. I was on Master Chaos actually about a week or so ago, and if you haven't checked that out, please do. Hey there, Chris. So Cable Guy, The Cable Guy, yes, it is one of my favorites. A lot of people don't like The Cable Guy. A lot of people. A lot of people are wrong. I'm just, just going to put that out there right now. The Cable Guy is such a fun movie, and it's such a dark, dark movie. Sometimes it doesn't quite know what it wants to be, but for me, it's it's a horror comedy, I guess, a horror dramedy. Not quite comedy. It's a horror dramedy. And the one that brought back lots of, lots of stuff for me, I could not pass this up. I'm not quite sure how, how Brian could pass this up, because this is some, I'm guessing you already have these films, Brian. Because these are ones that show Raven. Raven has done a couple of videos with Brian. It's, that's uh, Brian's daughter. And uh, she's awesome, by the way. She's done two videos. They've been amazing. <clears throat> so they did a 90s kid star collection. And there was no way in hell that I was going to pass up this one. So you got My Girl, My Girl 2, Wild America, Radio Flyer, North, and Troop Beverly Hills. And not gonna lie, I, I'm i not a 90s kid, but I do love a lot of these films, and I have kids of my own, so these are films that, that they would have seen. So I'm actually super stoked about this one. Like, I love The Kale by Way, Breach, The Net Ones, those are gonna be fun to watch, as Baby, Aunt, to Mama, Jim Carrey, but for, just for 
for the whole nostalgia factor of this alone. I am so excited to uh, to check out these uh, six titles. It's going to take longer for a review, <clears throat> but uh, like the there was a My Girl, My Girl 2 Blu-ray that came out like for for review, and I was going to grab that, but I figured I had this, so I, this would would be do for right now. True Beverly Hills, I actually really like. Thank, but thank you, Vanessa. Oh, was oh William, uh, and Vanessa, yeah. But these are coming out on the 16th of February, by the way, if you're interested. Oh, don't don't mention the D word. No, actually, I don't mind it, Joe. But yeah, like Radio Flowers, one I haven't seen in ages. You know, we got like Elijah Wood in this one here. Uh, just such such a good film. Uh, North again, another again another Elijah Wood film. So. Uh, <clears throat> But Roger Ebert didn't like Friday 13th either, so we, well, we'll forgive Roger Ebert because he was a good writer. Not always. Not always a good reviewer, but a good writer. Siskel was right. Siskel would say, I'm the better reviewer, referring to himself. Rogers is a better writer. <clears throat> I have not seen the point. I heard that the, that the disc, the Blu-ray disc is really... Like I said, well, it can't be that bad, but I've heard some people say it's really, really bad, like the quality of it. But I'll still pick it up anyway, because I'm an MVD re Rewind Completist. So I got a few that I got left to get. Actually, a nice few. I want to do the Nature Unbox one. It, it really depends, actually, on how much, uh, on how well the channel... This has been a hard, this has been a hard month for my channel. This is the first month that my channel is not going to, uh, to earn a profit, like in the month. <clears throat> that uh so to be honest that stressed me out a bit and uh i i, I took a couple days off to kind of <laughs> to kind of like you know zen out then i realized you're enjoying doing this don't think about that type of stuff have fun with the channel go on from there so that's what i'm doing that's what we're doing now here it's not going to stress anymore about things that i cannot control the extras on MVDs, the point is worth it at least. I gotta check out that. I, it looks like a cool title, man. Uh, I know I've seen it like a long, long time ago, back on VHS. I don't think of quality zero good then either. Um, I got some water here tonight. This is not not vodka or anything like that, though. I, I wish I kind of wish it was vodka actually. But I'm going off straight edge tonight, so there we go. <clears throat> I was making a video of Master Chaos TV, and uh, Fat Samurai guy. Two channels you should be su sub to, by the way. They're really good stuff, uh, and they're all having their drink. They all had their had their uh, had their whiskey, or uh, you know, rum, whatever. And my better half comes over and she gives me the choice between water and Coke. Really like, she's, and I'm like, ah, no, no apple whiskey for Aaron. No, so no, no. Apparently there wasn't. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Indicator made a big announcement, and uh, we're going to be looking at that. Uh, looking at what indicators got coming out, it's really good, and it's it's got me my kind of my OCD up a bit because it's uh I'm getting that FOMO uh, feeling, and I hate the FOMO feeling uh, because I'm getting behind on some of those uh, indicator box sets. Like I'm I got a nice few of them. I started at the beginning. I don't have the latest Hammer one. I don't have any of those two Columbia um, you know film noir sets. So we're going to be talking about that and a bit more. Thank you, Kubrick. <clears throat> All right. So let us hit the magic button. And we are gone to the Indicator website. We're gone to the amazing world of Indicator. Ooh. It is, I'm... Um, I'm not surprised that some of you guys think that I'm, I'm drinking when I make these videos lately because could be because that is me <clears throat> did I see the cover of Second Sight's Raw we're actually oh thank you for reminding me because we're going to get into that as well <clears throat> we're going to be talking about Second Sight tonight as well by the way the Columbia Noir sets look so good Vanessa so let's look first so the two things they announced we'll look at the first one the Nor regular one so Tom Berenger Mimi Rogers and Someone to Watch Over Me I love this film it's been a long time since I've seen it but I remember loving this one <clears throat> Directed by Ridley Scott, you know, so you know it's going to be a stylish, fun little romp. So let's see what the features are, because I don't know. Do they have the features on here yet? They just announced these. So we got a 2K restoration, auto commentary with filmmaker and film historian Jim Hempel. 
someone to write a script, interview with screenwriter Howard Franklin, someone to shoot a movie. I love the way they're doing that. Interview with, celebra- with celebrated cinematographer Stephen Poster, original theatrical trailer, or image gallery, promotional pub- publicity materials, new and improved English subtitles, limited edition exclusive booklet with essay by Jamie Graham, extra extracts from an American cinematographer article on the making of the film, selection of interviews with key cast members, and overview of contemporary critical responses and film credits. Limited edition of 3,000. So there are only 3,000. <clears throat> So that is pretty cool. UK premiere, this one on, on here. But the big one, the one everybody's excited about, the one that's gotten everybody all happy and stressed at the same time is this one right here. It's the Columbia Noir number three set. I don't have number one and two. <clears throat> so I am feeling, I am feeling very, very behind on these. <clears throat> so let's look at what they got here. <clears throat> so we got six films, and we'll go over them. Let's let's go over the before we go over the features. Let's 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 take a look at how sexy these films are. Let's go down here. Am I gonna have to do this for everyone? Can I just click on it? No, I can't. Can I? So there's a box with it with with the banner on it. We got Johnny O'Clock with Dick Powell and Evelyn Keys. Lee J. Cobb, oh wow, and Nina Fock. I love Nina Fock. Um, the Dark Pass with William Holden, Nina Fock, and Lee J. Oh, damn, this is a good one. Lois Maxwell from Super- Adventures of Superman. She played Lois Lane, by the way, uh, is in this one. We get Convicted with Glenn, F- I love Glenn Ford, Broderick Crawford. Um, oh man, Dorothy Malone, I love Dorothy Malone. Hey, Cinematech. It is hard. I don't have any of these yet. Hey, Michael. Welcome, man. Yeah, I know. It is a sexy, sexy set. I don't have any of them yet, Michael. None of them. So we got Between Midnight and Dawn. We got Mark Stevens, Edmund O'Brien, Gail Storm. Um, I'm trying to remember. Roland Winters is in this. So I know Roland Winters uh, from one thing, uh, from Charlie Chan. He was the third actor to play Charlie Chan uh, after, of course... uh, he came after Sidney Tolier. So I'm kind of, I'm, this set, the Sniper's one I know well, actually. This is actually a really good title. I really love the Sniper. And the sixth one is City of Fear with Vince Edwards. And I think Patricia Blair. Yeah, Patricia Blair. So this one, this one, I love the covers on these too, by the way. These are some really cool covers. So let's let's go down and look over the features on these. Directing wise, we got a Robert Rossin film, a Rudolph Matei, I'm probably gonna butcher these names, Henry Levin, Gordon Douglas, Edward Dimitrik, and Irving Lerner. This is gonna be released on May of 2021. Six Blu-rays, world premieres, by the way, for on Blu-ray for uh, for these here. They've been on DVD before, but none of these here have ever been on Blu-ray. <clears throat> Like the time I'm gonna have to buy them all, man. That's the thing. I'm just gonna have to buy them all. <clears throat> so we got 2K restoration on January o'clock, high definition presentations of the Dark Past, Convicted Between Midnight and Dawn, The Sniper and City of Fear, <clears throat> original mono soundtracks. That's very important to me because I am more of an audiophile than I am a videophile. Uh, <clears throat> audio commentary with filmmaker and film historians like Jim Hempel on jo- January o'clock. So we're getting Jim Hempel back again. Auto commentary with lecturer and curator Eloise Ross on The Dark Past. Auto commentary with film historians Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson. Those are names that hear a lot nowadays. On Convicted. Auto commentary with critic and author Brian Reisman on Benight, blah, behind, Between Midnight and Dawn. Get this out straight one of these days. Auto commentary with Film Noir Foundation's Eddie Muller. He does a good commentary. On The Sniper. And auto commentary with critic and author Adrian Martin on City of Fear. You're going to get an introduction to The Sniper by Martin Scorsese. That and Pop Paranoia Appreciation of City of Fear by 
filmmaker Christopher Nolan. That's because initially City of Fear and Sniper were two of those that had made it onto the Sony Film Noir collections that were created by Nolan back in the day. I'm not sure if any of you guys got those DVD sets or not. I got a couple of them. Uh, Sony or Columbia? Can't remember. Columbia. What am I saying? Oh, I'll get it out right. Pamela Hutchinson on Nina Fock. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Kim Newman on Gordon Douglas. Ford Noir video essay on the various film, Columbia Noir performances of Glenn Ford. That's I'm real. My dad's named after Glenn Ford. I got to get this one. Screen Guild Theater's Blind Alley radio adaptation of Broadway play, which inspired the Dark Past. The autobiography of a Jeep, a lighthearted documentary by Irving Lerner. Uh, I always love these extra little kind of weird things that they put on there, like little like special features and featurettes and stuff like that. Him, the Nation documentary short, directed by Alexander Hamid, uh, featuring fame conductor Arturo Toscani, and the NBC Sym- and the NBC Symphony Orchestra, performing the music of Giuseppe Verdi, the Cummington <laughs> a story Tati Dharma. Written and directed by Helen Grayson and Larry Madison, produced by Lerner and featuring the music of Aaron Copeland, reenacting the stories of a group of refugees who relocated to a small American town during World War II. Uh, the Negro Sailor, U.S. Navy documentary, short by convicted director, convi- <laughs> but quotes, quotes, the convicted director, Henry Levin. That could come out so wrong if, you, if somebody couldn't see it on the screen. But African American combatants in World War II, that sounds interesting. Three Lives, United Jewish Appeal, short from the writers and director of The Sniper, Edna and Edward Anhalt, and Edward Dimitrik, featuring Jane Wyman, Randolph Scott, Charlton Heston, and Arthur Franz. That's got to be cool. The features are just as good as the films, man. Uh, fe- uh, so we got None, Not One Shall Die, United Jewish... Oh, well, did I say this one? No, it's a different one. United Jewish uh, Appeal, short with Guy Madison, made by the core crew of, the, of many Columbia film noirs. Six short films by the Three Stooges. God, I love these. I'm a huge Three Stooges fan. Um, yeah, yeah, wow, wow. Um, <laughs> whoops, I'm an Indian. So long, Mr. Chumps. Dizzy to Texas. Three pests in a mess. Shivering Sherlock's All's Well That Ends Well. Original theatrical trailers for Johnny O'Clock, Between Minute and Don the Sniper, City of Fear, Image Gallery, Promotional and, and, publi- and Publicity Materials. 120 page booklet. Limited edition of six six thousand copies. Hey there, Nathan. How's it going? But it has a, uh, all that and more. I'm sure the image gallery. That's its stills gallery. So we're we'll, we're good. We're good with that. So there you go. That's the latest in the that that's a mouthful, right? In the box set. It's for uh, literally. I think it was Nathan that like put on like this was his reaction when he found that the set was coming out. Uh, <laughs> Or his wallet's reaction, which I really dig. I kind of dig that. So uh, I agree. They are so cool, Matthew. They're definitely worth the worth the buy. I've got a quite a few of them. I got the original stuff. Um, I'm just missing out on a few, but I mean, like these are two announcements. Just two announcements. But there's two big announcements. There's there's so much coming out, man. So much. They say that physical media is dying. They're like, oh, physical media is going out of the way. No, people don't get it right in the fact that, well, I guess I guess there's not so much physical media. No, there's tons of physical media. It's just that the way that we purchase things have changed. We don't go into brick and mortar stores to buy as much physical media anymore. We buy it online. We get we get it deals on Amazon. We go directly to the source, and because we're going directly to the source, there's no middleman that's cutting in. Because um, when you're they're shoving on some of the stuff, like say a company, say you're a smaller company, say you got some stuff, say you're a Makeflix, and you want to go to uh, to Walmart, or you want to go to like a Target or uh, somewhere like that, you're you know there's the you know you get a certain percentage. You you're not there you know, and if they don't sell them, doesn't do so well. It can be harder. Nowadays you're online. We we kind of cut out the uh, the middleman. Thank you. I've actually reached the 3,000 subs. I was I don't want to say anything. I don't want to jinx myself because it kind of goes up and down. So if you're not subbed, make sure that you are. And get some friends to sub. Um, I would appreciate it. And if you've been here, make sure you hit that amazing like button. Like, share, subscribe. Um, if you want to be part of the live movie club, because I'm going to be doing a live stream on my Patreon account. An exclusive live stream for that. Make sure you check that out. It's going to be a February valentine's day sale uh live stream so that'll be kind of fun 
All right, so there's more stuff to talk about. Let's go over to Twitter. Let's go to Second Sight. As you can see, look at this picture right here. I was really bummed out when Shout Factory put out Dog Soldiers and said that it wasn't coming to Canada. Like you would have to buy it from an American source and get it to come in. I never got it. It actually sold out. They said, oh, we didn't get a very good copy of Dog Soldiers. We couldn't really do a good scan of it. Uh, people were not were not too happy. Hey there, Mary. Thank you. <clears throat> On the uh, so on the dog on the dog soldiers, the way that looked. Well, Second Sight has gone above and beyond again because they're Second Sight because it is what they do. Um, so for several weeks, we've been discussing and rescanning the negatives for a new 4K restoration. So they're happy to announce that they're going ahead. They will be releasing on a 4K UHD dog soldiers this year, later on this year. So they could have not told us and so and just released the Blu-ray. And then down the road said, you know what, we're going to have like a, we might do, and then just randomly announce a 4K release. But as soon, as soon as they knew that they could do a 4K release, even though it could cut into the, to some of the sales of the Blu-ray release, bam, they let us know right away. You got to love that. You love the show. <laughs> let me skip a share release. Someone else puts it better. Same here. You're getting irreversible for Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's, well, you know. <clears throat> romantic and all I could see her true romantic so somebody asked if I'd seen the cover to Ra and I did let's show you guys the cover because they're putting out a really cool edition of Ra really cool title by the way so we got a limited edition limited to 2,000 copies I will tell you zero bit the film just say it's a really cool film to check out. Exactly, William. The physical media is not dying. People, it's just that a lot of like, a lot of the media that, that reports on physical media dying and stuff like that, in all honesty, a lot of times they're not up to date with the way things are going. And uh, a lot of things are going online and not just in the streaming way. Things are going online is in the purchasing way. <clears throat> I was on your last, I think I was on your last live stream, Michael, which was really good, by the way. So, Make Flix, they're doing their free DVD February. So, when you, uh, apparently when you, when you do, when you make an order, you add a no case disc to your order and it's free. So, no case, I'm guessing that means it comes in like a sleeve or something like that and you, maybe with the, with the artwork and you just got to, buy a case that type of thing i'm guessing i've never bought a no case thing before but i'm tempted because there's some cool titles here so let's go to their no case titles let's see what what's no case titles they have get one for free or buy them for 4.99 so there is the bad movie police number three humanoids from atlantis i uh, love the bad movie police thing that's a cool neat, neat little idea that they've done the Bad Movie Police Double Feature, Zombie Cop, and Maximum Impact. Uh, then we got Basic How-To Halloween Makeups. Love the artwork on that. I got to get that book, man. I, I really want that, like, that six-pack. Like, I know the, the films aren't exactly, you know, the highest quality of films, but they're my films. They're my type of films. It always bothers me when you get people that, that always will say, like, you know, I only listen, only watch, like, like the serious films. I only watch the Bergmans. I only watch the Fellinis. You're not watching all the serious films. You're, you're depriving yourself of some good entertainment. Don't take yourself so seriously. In the case of Collector's Worst Nightmare. It does. It's got an old, old kind of old collector type feel to it. And I do like that. Bloodletting is there. Uh, Deadlands, The Rising, I don't know that title. I know Bloodletting, though. Uh, Destruction Kings, That's a looks like a cheesy fun. Um, don't, look, don't Look in the Cellar. Oh, that is my type right there. Whatever you do, don't look in the cellar. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. AFF Film Crew, Wet Heat. Film Crew and Wet Heat, Splatter Rampage. We got Filthy McNasty. Apparently it's a double feature. It's got something else on it. The female of the species is the most deadly of all. Filthy McNasty. 
No, dude, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I am actually talking about no one in particular. <laughs> Um, no, no, don't take it. Please never take anything that I take, like, to heart or personally. You are my people, Kubrick. Force Primeval. Kingdom of the Vampire. It's a double feature. It's a, of course, that's a Tempe release as well. A Tempe DVD, I know them a lot. I used to collect them a lot, actually. No, no case might become the new slipcover. You never know. Serious directors do comedy. That's always fun. Malva 2, Kill Teen 8. Hmm, Malva 2. I wonder what that's like homaging. We'll say homaging. Okay, there's a second page. So let's go to the second page. But there's more than this that they announced. There's some VHS stuff that was announced from them as well, by the way. Uh, My Dead Girlfriend. Uh, that's That's got all types of implications that I don't want to get into. Uh, we got Ozone by Special Edition here by Tempe. Polymorph Special Edition. Quest for the Egg Salad. Like, by that title, I'm thinking I would never watch Quest for the Egg Salad. And then I see the girl on the cover and I'm like, I would totally watch Quest for the Egg Salad. You want to watch serious movies. But Filthy McNasty sounds serious. Uh, Action USA followed. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. So for those that don't know, Action USA was a Vinegar Syndrome archive release. It sold out uh, really quickly. Actually, one of their biggest, like, quickest selling releases, MVD Rewind is doing their own version of it with an extra feature, actually a stunt feature, which is pretty big because Action USA is a, is a film filled with stunts, directed by a stuntman. Uh, it's an archival feature, but it's a pretty cool one. And, of course, it's going to have the uh, different artwork. I love, love, love the cover for Action U. Let's, let's, let, let's see if we can find it. So let me go back to Twitter for a second. We got to do this. We got to see if we can find MVD Rewind here. MVD, come on, MVD Visual, MVD Entertainment. I want to see if it's here. I don't see it. So let's put in the word action. USA. I'm probably sure. I'm guessing like, you know, it's more than likely on like, you know, Don of the Disc. I'm sure Don of the Disc, like I mentioned it. Uh, no, 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 we don't have to re that type of stuff. So let, let's, let's just, let's just Don of the Disc this thing. Don of the Disc. If, if you can't find it anywhere else, Don of the Disc's always the, you, the Twittery place to go. And nothing comes up. What in the blue heck is going on here? Try again. Well, let's go home. Someone to watch over me. I can't sing. Man, can I ever not sing? Um, <laughs> all right. So Zerium 2 is coming out from Media Blasters. Media Blasters is still around. Now, this is an old, like, these are 2020, like, announcements. Bloody hell, what's going on here? <sighs> All right. There we go. So, Action USA is coming out through uh, MVD Rewind. This is a pre-order right there. What's really neat, and uh, I wish I could find it. I wish I could find, like, the, the damn thing because uh, it has a really cool slipcover, a really neat slipcover. So there is... <laughs> Quick to connect me. I don't want to... See, I don't want to bring my Facebook up. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, that's the reason, Mike. <laughs> a Facebook would have been the easy way to do it. Um... Anyway, so there we go. That's the two covers for Action USA. Uh, that, but that's not the slip cover. The slip cover is very different. It's uh, based on a... I've got to show it because I actually that was really cool. 
It helps if I spell. Because it's got this like red slip to it. It's meant to look like a, uh, a video store. Like one of the video stores where they like kind of have the, like the red slip, would have to cut it out and, and kind of like kind of post the picture on it. It's really cool. It's really neat the way they got it done. Uh, damn it! Am I gonna go to my Facebook and do this? Uh, I am. Well, the newest feature on that one is going to be I've done this out of there, but then I have an original. So look here. So you see the, the red case. For this, so this is actually so this is MVD Rewind Collections Action USA. So it's got this red case, called, you know, Eric's Video Club. So it's meant to look like the uh, the video store that was that was out around that time, uh, and I love the look of that. I love the fact that it puts this old video store aesthetic to it. Got, I love the way that they do this. Uh, I like the stickers they put on the you know please rewind stickers, all the type of stuff. But this is just taking it to another level, and I love the aesthetics of the of the cover, the way this is done. It, it just it's incredible I love that stuff the extra feature on this one let me bring it up here is a uh, yeah, see, it's, it's meant to be like Earl's video club which was a video company back in the day like uh, they were like pre blockbuster So for us older people, those they saw it at the Blockbuster, especially if you live in the U.S., then you know it. So that's like a that's a copy, like of an Earl's videotape, right? You get the red case with the with the picture right in the middle, and it's just kind of like a nostalgia throwback. But the feature it's a featurette on on the stunt work on the uh, on the Action USA film, done by uh, you know an archival feature done by the stuntman, I think. So there you go. So the, all the features are the same. There's no features missing from the uh, from the from the Vinegar Syndrome Edition. All the features on the Vinegar Syndrome Edition are included, as far as I know. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, though. On the other edition, and uh, they uh, you, they get an extra one extra feature as well. So you're you're good. I mean, it's good stuff. So again, all the same features plus one. And some people are super upset about it. Like, in all honesty, only people that, that are really upset about this are scalpers. <laughs> or people that really like to have, like, the only vert, like, oh, I got this. No, you can. Uh, Action USA is quite the title. And I have it, but you you can't get it. But I thought, I, I thought I'd let you know that uh, that I was ma that I managed to pick it up before it sold out. But no, it's like, I don't, I don't mind. Like, let's get as many of these cool. There's nothing exclusive. I don't think there is. Like, let me check though. That is a good question, Michael. I am curious now. Cause you may be right. So we're gonna go to the sort out and out of print section. All right. So I am going to bring up on my phone, Action USA from the. Helps if I spell it. And we're going to look at the features on each of these. So it includes the audio commentary with director John Stewart, cinematographer Thomas Calloway, actor Greg Scott Cummings, and filmmaker Stephen Letcha. Okay, that's there. Interview with director uh, John Stewart in HD. I'm sure that's here. That's not here? 
Okay, so I'm gonna look at the NVIDIA one first, then I'll tell you the ones from the other one. So this is the NVIDIA one. Interview with the director, um, Action USA behind the scenes stunts featurette, uh, an NVIDIA exclusive, Dr. Trailer, collected mini poster, reversible artwork. So there are features, there are features. Michael is 100% right. So it's a Q&A with director John Stewart and filmmaker Brian Trenchard Smith. I got a feeling that's the same thing, that it's under, under a different banner. Uh, I got a feeling that is the same thing. So the one thing that I guess would be would be exclusive would be the last GM interview with actor Gregory Scott Cummins. So that's the that would be their uh, the the one there. Either way, man, if you got one of them, you, you're set. It's an excellent film. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. It's nothing to be upset about. Should you watch Beastmaster? You should. It's an excellent film. Don Coscarelli, man, he can do no wrong in my opinion. Yeah, you're right. One interview is missing. So there's exclusives on both sides. So either way, if you're a real completist, if you got Action USA, the Vinegar Senior Edition, and you're like, oh, this one's MVD runs, we runs pretty cheap. Maybe I'll grab that. You can, because when they initially come out, people say they're expensive. They're not. MVD rewind get expensive after they come out. When they initially come out, they're usually like twenty bucks, twenty two bucks. Then after they come out, they raise like to forty or so. Here in Canada, anyway. Welcome back, your brick. The Action USA Vincent is sexy. They're both sexy titles. They can get together and make a sexy baby sequel, Action USA 2. All right, so something to scream about. It's a documentary about Scream Queens, uh, narrated by Brink Stevens. Uh, Space Men and Go-Go Girls from Makeflix. We're still on these, by the way. Teen Ape Goes to Camp. Obviously a high-budget film. <laughs> the Brass Ring. The Sandman. And Wingrave. So we have finished off those titles. We've we've gone through that, but there's more because they made an announcement. They made an announcement today about VHS. So they got some VHS stuff. Maybe it's all gone. I'm not quite sure. Uh, some Phantom Pains ones. Now there's still a, f a couple left. So we got Robot Ninja on VHS here for twenty nine nine on sale now for twenty nine ninety nine. The Zombie Army. I love the artwork. The artwork looks like a comic book. And I, you guys know I'm a comic book geek, so. Limited edition VHS Phantom Pains films. I think there's more. There's like six of these originally. I think they're all sold out. Of course, there's a book that uh, that Michael has talked about that I really want to get. B-movies in the 90s and beyond. And J.R. Bookwater's Shocking Shorts. That's one I wouldn't mind checking out too as well. But Robot Ninja and the Zombie Army. I love these covers. Look at these covers. Can it come up any bigger? Look at that cover. It's 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 cool. I don't need notifications. I do love this artwork. Love the cover here. Uh, it reminds me of a comic book. I'm all down for comic books. It is, I think, eight millimeter. I don't think it was done in sixteen, and I definitely was done thirty two. Not if, not if I'm correct. It's been a while since I've seen it, Michael. And these are like when they say they're limited they're not joking they're they're limited there's two left so vhs with comic book and poster oh cool so this comes with a comic book and a poster so that when i say it looks like a comic book that is a bloody comic book because so we see a rope ninja right there oh i love this artwork too there's two of these left guys you get the comic you get the poster so there you see, look at that big, look at that cool. It looks like that, like a Marvel comic back in the day, back when I was growing up. Dinosaur Island, I remember that. I haven't seen the movie in years, Kobe. <laughs> Second Sight's DOA seems a lot more, a little more packed than MVDs. It probably is, actually. MVD is good when it comes to, like, when you see them doing, like, a document I'm making of on a film, that's where they're killing it, man. But, yeah, look at this. If you want, Michael, if you want Robot Ninja on, on glorious VHS quality with a comic book, official comic book adaption, and a sexy poster to put, in your, to put on your wall. So you, you too can say, I own me some Robot Ninja. 
Scott, if you, Robot Ninja is the worst film you've seen, you got to see more movies. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> he goes, I've seen way worse movies than Robot Ninja. So limited edition VHS, no comic book to this one. But I do like this artwork here. Reversible cover. How do they do reversible cover on a VHS? Like just the other side? No, they can't because look at this. See, because... Is it put on a plastic case? How does this work? Anybody know how reversible cover on a VHS works? It would be complicated. Evil Tunes, I love Evil Tunes. Evil Tunes is the one with Madison, right? The adult actress. But it does have Madison. <laughs> and, uh, not gonna lie, growing up, when well, I'm growing up, I was, I was older. I was like, you know, an adult, so I can say it. Big fan of Madison's. So when I found out she did a legit film, you can bet I rented that movie right away. Did, oh, you like the Dead Trilogy review and ranking? Excellent. I'm, I'm sorry that one came out about a day late. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm, you know, working on a, a lot of different things right now. I'm kind of like upgrading and like doing some things with, new with the channel. I got some Patreon stuff coming out. Um, it's been a, it, it's been a, it's been a rough month, my my friends. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. We we work through it all. Autograph. What's autograph? I'm, I'm, see, I'm, I've got a video shot already next week of like a deep dive of the Makeflix website. So I'm going to have to redo that so that I can just put some new stuff in there. Introducing the autograph collection. So we got like, so who autographed these films? I'm like, I want to pick one that's not Jared Bookwater so that I know for sure. Because I know if it's skinned alive, it's going to be Jared Bookwater. So let's go screaming in high heels. Who autographed that film, by the way? Autographed by director Jason Paul Coleman. I'm not gonna lie; I would have been more excited if that was Michelle Bauer that uh, that did the uh, did the autograph there. So, Robert Ninja gets an autograph. Autographed by each copy is autographed by J.R. Bookwater. Includes ten minutes, never before seen. Now, there, there you go. See, you may think that. Robot Ninja may be the worst movie that you've ever seen, but maybe, maybe those 10 minutes are going to turn Robot Ninja into the best movie you've ever seen. You never know. It could happen. I love Screaming in High Heels. Uh, I actually got this one initially back in the day on, I think it was an 88 Films release. Like, they had the, uh, the documentary on one of the uh, Slasher Classics collection. Or was it Slasher Classics, or was it like the... Uh it was on one of them actually but this one has more features on it like there's a or there's a reunion on here 2020 zoom reunion um like two vintage flashback weekends of of horror from q a sessions i'm guessing that's from fangoria uh i really want this one this is an ac actually an excellent title but if you've never looked into make flick stuff really do i mean like, like a lot of it's like straight the dvd shot on video like kind of really really guerrilla type of filmmaking uh done around done on lower budgets fun stuff though like fun cheesy low budget stuff if you like that type of stuff if you like that stuff like me and you're and you remember the days of, of trolling your local video shop and you're like what am i going to pick up and they had like 20 copies of, uh, copies of titanic there and you saw, like, oh, there's I can watch Die Hard yet again. Which you could. Die Hard's really good. It's layered that way. Uh, but uh, And then you saw, like, these films you never heard of before. You didn't know the director, none of the stars you were sure of. Maybe there was one or two. Maybe you saw, like, Lenny Quigley or Michelle Bauer on there. Maybe there was, like, a name, like, like sixth or seventh down in the cast. You're like, okay, that sounds fantastic. I can totally do that. And you took it home, and it became, like, your new favorite film. Or, you know, one of those films you just had to tell your friends about because it was just so insane. Um, and that's what this is. Make Flix has that feel to it. So I will definitely, I will definitely do a Make Flix video. I, mean, I can't go on here anymore because I'm doing a video on Make Flix. What the heck, man? But uh, 
Really, really cool stuff. I would love to have their six pack. Uh, I would like to be as lucky as Heath was and like actually just got sent the six pack. Uh, same thing. I, I would love to have like David Sterling contact me and get some of his stuff. I would love to show that on the channel uh, because he has some really cool stuff as well. When you're talking about like some shout on video stuff, some of the camp blood stuff, some of the things stuff that's out there. There's a things like box set. There's a there's a camp blood box set. So a lot of cool stuff. Oh, did you watch Don't Go in the Woods alone? Now, before you say, before you trash it, trash, um, it, I really love Don't Go in the Woods Alone. And, but I'm not alone on this. Stephen Thrower, the man himself, the, the mind of exploitation cinema, uh, who, wrote, who wrote, literally wrote the book on A Nightmare USA, that a lot of these companies, let's be honest, a lot of these companies like Vinegar Syndrome and Severin and all those, they read his book. They looked at his book when they were looking for films to put out on, <laughs> and to acquire. You know they did. I know they did. Uh, he loves it. Uh, he loves the film. He actually thinks it's it's uh, it's highly underrated. They don't, that's right. Unfortunately, they don't so well. You enjoyed it. Excellent. So, James Bryan did a lot of really freaky. James Bryan did stuff. He did adult films as well. Uh, he worked a lot with Renee Harmon. Lady Street Fighter, by the way. If you don't have that Agfa title, I'm going to tell you right now, you got to get Lady Street Fighter. It's nuts. It's one of those, I've watched it several times, and it's not a good movie. Like, don't don't let me like lead you to believe that Lady Street Fighter is a good film or that it has good acting or good like action sequences. But, oh, my God, is it is it ever a freaking entertaining movie? Uh it just it, it's nuts so renee Harmon is this girl she was she was actually an acting teacher uh, if you picked up uh the vinegar syndrome release which one is it now i don't think it's sold out is it sold out let's go to it so i'm going to be doing soon when i get the house of usher i'm going to be doing like uh something uh, I'm going to be, like, rating all of these here. I'm going to be doing a big review and ranked where I rate all these titles. Um, so, Hellraiser, Hellriders. This was made by James Bryan. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy film. It's got Adam West in it for a few minutes and his stunt double in it for a lot. It's got uh, Tina Louise from Gilligan's Island in it. And, and of course, it's got Renee Harmon in, in a shockingly small role, which which is a shame because she she needs she needs to be larger in this film because you got to have the cheesiness renee Harmon she has an she had an amazing life she was like she dated a mobster like all kinds of crazy stuff went on in her in her real life but she was like an acting teacher uh that couldn't act uh when you watch her she's like she's such an attractive lady older lady but she's like uh was my age probably uh, around the time she made these films so older really um but but uh she also um she kind of sounds like tommy was so <laughs> she does if you watch lady street fighter if that's her voice man <clears throat> then then yes she does kind of sound like tommy was so like she's like the mom of tommy was so is dr jekyll's the worst film vinegar cinema ever released so we got michael here and he would say that it's probably vice academy though i i, I do i doubt not agree with that though i do think vice academy four to six are actually better than vice academy one to three i'm going on that i'm going out on that limb i'm telling you that right now that's what i think uh <clears throat> that's why i think four to six should be put out because i do think that people that were not as big on one to three might like four to six a bit better uh anyway so i don't want to give it away right now what the worst title is But Dr. Jekyll's Dungeon of Death may not be my worst title on this list. So, <clears throat> there's some great titles on there. The Martial Law films, really good, by the way. I really like the Martial Law. Necromancer, that's a good one. Fight me on it. Spellcaster, same thing. Another really good. Some people didn't like Spellcaster. And for that, I like, you, ha you have no joy in your life. See, do you know what, though? Dr. Jekyll's Dungeon of Death, Michael, it's exactly what you think it's going to be. It is exactly what it is. Like, if you looked into it at all and, and you know, said, oh, it's a, it's a really low-budget movie 
and you got a local kung fu studio, kung fu like class to act on it. It's exactly what it is. Now I can forgive that. I can forgive that that type of craziness and the fact that they commit to the nuttiness, that they commit to the craziness. I can't put it last. I cannot put it last because they know what they are. They're committed to it. And you got a guy that's doing acting that is reminiscent to Billy Van in Hilarious House of Frightenstein. So I got to love that part of it. So for me, it's, it's the one I just mentioned. Actually, James Bryan, I like his stuff. And I think it's entertaining. But Hell Riders is, the, uh, is for me the worst Vinegar Syndrome title. You destroy. I can't do uh, Tom Russo. I think I was an actor and I can't do Tom Russo. Come on, man. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, because because Doctor Jekyll is exactly what you expect, because it is what it is, and it leans into what it is. Uh, I, I I give it a more of a pass. Uh, whereas Hell Riders does have a couple of names in it, and it is a biker movie, but it's done in the eighties. Uh, when biker movies were long past, uh, were were way past being passe. They were like really, uh, the, you know, it wasn't a thing anymore. Um, with a a cast of like people, so I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, there's not a lot of Adamant in it. I'm a huge Adamant fan. It is a fun cheesy watch. I like all of them, guys. Here's the, here's the, here's the thing with me. I love these these type of movies run through my veins like it's something that you know if you've watched my channel at all this this type of, I love this type of stuff like unabashedly I have I make no bones about it I like these type of films I I watch all types of films I can turn on a Fellini film I can turn turn on Ellie Wars it doesn't matter I, I I enjoy this stuff but I literally study this stuff <laughs> probably not a lot actually Cinematic. Adam West probably did it for like other reasons and like you know just getting paid. I do love the fact that you go into the town and you can actually tell that this is not a real town. You can see a sign and everything. Oh, LA Wars was fantastic. I loved LA Wars. Uh, that that that's high on the list. I'm a huge Elizabeth Caton fan, so you know a Necromancer is going to be high, higher on my list. And Spellcaster is like, it's one of those early, it's like, a, I'm guessing it was, that must have been Empire's picture flick, because Spellcaster has got the castle from, a, that you know, that the band would use in like so many movies. Um, you're getting like all, all these, you get these cast members, like you get, what's her name? The girl from uh, Take On Me, the, the AHA video. So if you saw it, you're a fan of music like I am. Uh, Aha was a really cool video, really cool group in the 80s. The, the guy was like a, a classically trained opera singer, and he made a, and he did a band. Uh, you know, he had a band called Aha. Take On Me was this huge video. Like, basically, there's this guy that goes into a comic book, and he, like, rescues this girl. The girl in the video, um, she's um, she was one of the stars of the movie Dolls. So uh, she's in the movie, in part pictures, movie Dolls. But not the only time they use her. They also use her in Spellcaster as well. She actually plays the um, the alcoholic, the, the always drinking um, a rock star in uh, Spellcaster. What's the best VSA? That you're going to have to wait on because I'm going to do a reviewed and ranked on the, on the, on the VS, VSA. So I can't tell you yet. Well, there is a wicked amount of news today, guys. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to tell you guys. Like, to actually... Let's do... Boo. <clears throat> All right, so I'm back for a second, at least, before we go on to something else again. Or maybe not. Vinegar Sam is draining. Hey, Retro Horror. It's draining your bank account. Evil Tunes is best compared to something like Sword Hills Ma Massacre 2. I love Sword Hills Massacre 2. And of course, Part 3, Hard to Die. Those films need releases. I want to see Sword Hills Massacre, especially 2 and 3. Now, I love the fact that for those that don't haven't seen the Sword Hills Massacre films, the first one's actually pretty serious, pretty kind of a uh, more of a serious film. Uh, but Parts 2 and 3, they go all out. And uh, <laughs> rather than like going back to Sword Hills Massacre 1, uh, what they do is the the uh, and I love this. I love this. 
they decide to take scenes from Slumber Party Massacre 1 and use that as the with this made up like backstory and with the best a- actor like the best <laughs> this guy in a and and he's in, been in a few movies too I, I, can't, I can't for the life of me remember his name right now but you know him when you see him he's got this kind of like this sad sack type look on his face and man he goes through hell hey there dagger man he goes through hell in every one of these films um and literally like if you did not know that hard to die was was sorority host massacre three you wouldn't you you wouldn't know it orville there orville ketchum that's his name uh, i love me some orville ketchum uh sorority house massacre especially two and three are two of my most wanted titles right now uh on blu-ray am i going to do a giveaway not right now i i uh I, I'm, I'm doing <laughs> i'm doing a uh, the opposite of giveaway i'm i'm a uh, i'm the uh please give to my channel <laughs> That's that's what I'm doing right now. Is that Frankenstein? Yes, it is trash. Actually, there was a uh, a, a, a local artist at a, at a Comic Con that I was on. I've got one of Frankenstein, and although you can't see it right here, I have one of uh, Boris Karloff as the mummy, as uh, as well done in the same style as that one. Um, I'm a huge I like a, I'm a huge horror movie fan. I grew up with Universal stuff and Hammer, so uh, needless to say. Evil Tunes. Yes, it does have that right amount of sleaze. Digital copy of Shivers. Oh, we might do that. A takeaway. <laughs> San Arcadia. Welcome, man. Uh, uh, and welcome to the guys that I that I didn't wouldn't didn't get to say hi to. Um, on the uh, we might I'll, 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 we'll con- I'll contact him. We actually work 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 something out with that. Do something like that. A digital giveaway on my channel. Hit. Frank Stein, Bride of Frank Stein. Amazing stuff. Bride of Frank Stein is one of the great like sequels of all time. It, like, it truly is. Like it, it gets... But you know what's one of the really great sequels of all time? People don't talk about it. Daughter of Dracula and Son of Dracula. Those are incredible. People never talk about those. But they do it. They do like... They're so good. Daughter of Dracula is this amazingly super subver- subversive film... Uh, that is way ahead of its time. And Son of Dracula, again, is another film that was ahead of its time, especially for the style of uh, the effects that he had. Uh, Lon Chaney Jr. as 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 the Son of Dracula. Actually, well, not he's not really the Son. He's Dracula. He's changed. He's Count Alucard. But it's it's you know it's dark and it's nihilistic. Especially for like a for a universal film, it's got some great special effects, some neat stuff. I always love Son of Dracula. It's always one of those ones I would never miss. Like I could skip Dracula sometimes. I know, Vanessa. I know heresy, right? Her- heresy, right? But I could never skip Son of Dracula. Always love that. Aliens, Godfather Two, and Empire Strikes Back are excellent sequels. Evil Tunes Four. Are you serious? Is there an Evil Tunes Two and Three that I don't know about? Vinny Sin was calling you. Yeah, that's it. Well, what I'm getting tired of, though, guys, I'm on Facebook and I'm on like the Vinegar Syndrome's like uh, web page. So, um, and I'm seeing so many of these Action USA like jokes and jokes, and they were funny at first, but man, I'm so tired of that that right now. Targets is an amazing film, and it's a good last film for Boris Karloff. It was really is. Uh, I'm glad that he got to go out on something like that. I, I really like Targets. I do. I like the Spanish Dracula. Actually, I'm going to heresy again. I like parts of it are better than the actual like the film that was shot in the daytime, and it's because they got to look at the like the footage from the day in the daytime. They got to shoot at night, and they got to like do like correct some of the mistakes that were made in the initial Dracula film. That's the thing, right? Because you get... Imagine, like... like Put it to you this way. So, you're making a movie. Like, this is like... This is your first time making a film. It, it's this type of film hasn't been made before, right? 
And in the daytime, you're making this film. You got you got the script, and you're shooting it. You're doing the best you can. You know, you're new. This is this this is new. Then at night, you give your script over to somebody else, and they they shoot like their own version of the film. They got act. They've seen you shoot all throughout the day. They're getting it. It's a horror film. They're shooting at night, so it's more atmospheric. And so yeah, the Spanish Dracula like does really well. Thanks to Evil Tunes Four. When did Warlock? When did Evil Tunes Two and Three happen? Because I did not know of those films. Well, the Gossi is not Spanish, so. Targets was an incredible film. I've got that on DVD. I, I, is there a good Blu-ray of Targets? Because if there is, I do not know of it. I have to save up right now, guys. Next month is my birthday. Uh, my daughter's birthday actually was, was the 30th of January. She was 26. There are no... so, so Okay, so it's a joke then. So it's, it's basically like if they wouldn't have done Spaceballs 3, the search for Spaceballs 2. Is it being done by the original director? Oh, by the way, happy anniversary. He's not here today. Uh, he normally is. Jamie Blanks uh, is uh, is definitely a friend of the channel here. Um, so, Valentine, the movie, J Val the, the slasher movie that I love, Valentine, um, has a, uh, it's its 20th anniversary this week. And that's one of the movies that made me think like not think that we were lost when it came to uh to slasher films so happy anniversary to valentine a highly underrated film in its day your birthday was february the first well happy belated birthday trash man my birthday is march the 31st oh terror tunes okay hey cinema dave welcome man it has been a while. Got to get together sometime. I am looking to doing and doing some conversational videos on this channel. Uh, I might be reaching out to some of you guys to converse with. Uh, so if you're interested, I'll, I'll I'll reach out to you. I'll actually be there's a couple uh, there's a, a couple independent like directors. And uh, there's a, uh, a cinematographer that I'm still working on, uh, getting on the channel. So I'll let you know when I, when that when that all comes up. And I do want to reach out to the YouTube community and actually do some kind of. I haven't got like the name of it yet, but I, I do want to do something uh, like that. Where uh, the camera's always on me, and I want to like do some interviews. And oh, I don't want to call them interviews. I want to do conversations with with people. Uh, talking about stuff. One, I'm actually wrote, reached out to to Jamie, so hopefully I'll, I'll be able to get done get some done with done with him as well. The director of Nicole. I'm actually trying to a movie that I reviewed on here uh, last week. Uh, I'm actually trying to get him on the channel too, and do uh, it's like just to to broaden the scope of the channel itself. Master, oh, Mastercast. I'm definitely gonna have you on, man. <clears throat> No money, no presents. That's not fun. I know the no money part, man. <laughs> Don't we all right now, right? Don't we all? I'll say my Dave does some amazing stuff. See, my Dave did the, the did the Sunday show. I was supposed to be on there twice, by the way. I, the reason that I didn't get on uh, again was my fault. Well, not my fault, my work's fault, because all of a sudden I was working every Sunday. Oh, that is awesome. There's the Monster Squad. That is so cool, man. You're out in L.A., you can get all those connections. I may avail of your connections one of these days know a guy that knows a guy type of thing
I'm looking to see how many have actually that are here that have actually liked my video. I had one guy. I did my Dawn of the Dead. Like, if you haven't watched my, I do review them ranked every, usually every Tuesday. It came on Wednesday this week, uh, where I take usually usually at least three films and I'll like review and rank them. And I did like the the original trilogy for Romero's Dead. I'm gonna do the the seek the other three films later on, but um, basically I did like Night's Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Dead Dead. So you haven't seen that, uh, definitely check it out. Um, I got like a couple like like dislikes on it. So screw those people. <laughs> it's just to put that out there right now, man. Just like in my videos. I guess I could be like, what's the word? I could be diplomatic and say, well, to each his own. Thank you for coming in anyway. Well, no, you downvoted it. Screw you. <laughs> uh, for those in my Patreon that have not yet checked out my Classics and Rock Born in the USA, uh, I guess, essay, video essay that I did, uh, check it out. It's really fun. I It took a long time for me to actually get to do that one. Thank you, Cinematic. I loved making the Springsteen video. I will be doing more type of video essays. It is good for the algorithm, I guess. Just as long as it's not too much. As it doesn't oh, go uneven too much, right, Michael? You don't want to get like, look there and you see like, well, look, I got 49 likes and like, what, 100,000 dislikes? What the hell? Sacrificing that goat on video wasn't a good idea. Uh, so... But yeah, that's that's the thing that I'm looking into right now. I, I actually thought about not making a video. I, I thought about not making a video today. I've been down. I've been bummed. I've been bummed out. But you can't. You can't let that get you. I know the Bloody Valentine location tour is going to happen. But you know what? I want a donation video. <laughs> uh, remember when I said I was, like, I was finished with the announcements and stuff that's coming out like your wallet was good for now? No, it's not. Because this is coming out. Blue Underground is playing with Dead and Buried on 4K. Now, the Blue Underground release of Dead and Buried, not the best quality. Their initial, like, release of that. So this, this is going to be, this is going to be one to buy. It's a 4K release of Dead and Buried, which has never had a really great transfer. <clears throat> so super stoked about getting this on 4k man and did you notice did you know did you look closely at here because it's not just the 4k it's not just the blu-ray but with dead and buried the same as daughters of darkness oh yes you're getting the cd as well so you're gonna get the soundtrack cd you're gonna get the 4k you're gonna get the blu-ray release it's been a while since this one's been done so hopefully they put some new features on here some some really nice neat stuff Super looking forward to uh, to Dead and Buried. Just such a fun title. It said, if you liked our zombie lenticular cover, you'll love Dead and Buried. So there you go. My ASMR for today, I guess. Anyhow. That's our newsy video st stuff for today. I will be taping some stuff on Friday. If you're a Patreon member, remember there's a live video coming up on Patreon. I will make sure you guys are aware of that before it happens. Check out the Night of the Living Dead board game. I haven't, I, I like the Zombicide, so I will check it out. I mean, for those that don't know, I am a board game collector too. I collect a lot of things. That's why I'm broke all the time. Um, 
British Film Institute has revealed that it plans to bring to Blu-ray targets, starring Boris Karloff. The release is set to arrive on the market on March 22nd, 2021. Just a few shopping days before my birthday. Anyway, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. You keep this channel going. You really do, especially right now. Perfect. Matthew, I'll definitely talk to you about that. But make sure I'll do all the cool stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Share this video. You like this video? Put it on the Twitter. Tweet it out. Do all that tweety stuff on your Twitter machine, as um, as Taz would say. And if you know wrestling, you know who Taz is. There is a donation thing down in the below. Feel free to use it sometime. Put a couple coppers this way. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great night. I am Aaron. You are the cult of cinema. 